I'm Dr. David, neurosurgeon specialized in pain management. I have treated numerous patients with back and leg pain, and most of them have been within the expected range, so diagnosis and treatment uh, have been relatively comfortable. However, recently, I have encountered patients with back and anterior thigh pain caused by unimaginable causes, and I have been uh, I have had the experience of being immersed in a new concern, so I introduce it. Um, a 42 years old male has suffered from back and right thigh pain for about 30 years, and every time he goes to the hospital, he only received a diagnosis of lumbar intervertebral disc herniation and received physical therapy. He has always had back pain, but a few days ago, he suddenly developed a severe back pain on the right and was unable to fully extend his lower back, so he came half bent forward. Well, I examined the lower back with CM fluoroscope, the interval between third and fourth lumbar vertebra was narrowed, and a compression fracture in the spine due to an injury in the past was identified. When I perpate the area, I found that there was severe pressure between the thoracic spine and lumbar spine, and there was pressure in the right sacroiliac joint area between the fourth and fifth lumbar vertebra. I could have a static diagnosis of back pain caused by problems with 12th thoracic nerve and sacred left joint syndrome, which I commonly encounter. Um, however, when I mixed 0.5% lidocaine and 50 mg of steroid and injected it into left and right of thoracic vertebra and sacred left joint as a local anesthetic, it did not help relieve the pain, relieve the pain at all. I also tried lumbar epidural blocks with 15 milliliter, but it had no effect. Um, after rushing to have an MRI of the lower back, it was confirmed that there was degenerative spinal stenosis and large protrusion of the intervertebral disc between the third and fourth lumbar vertebra, which was compressing the fourth uh, lumbar nerve. When I examined the patient again, I was able to find the severe atrophy of the right gluteus maximus that, had, that I had not been able to identify before the MRI. When I perpetrate the area bef between the fourth and fifth lumbar vertebra, the pain was still severe, and when I perpetrate the left and right gluteus maximus with the patient lying down, I found severe pressure on the right gluteus maximus. It appeared that the pain was caused by the protrusion of the intervertebral disc between the third and fourth number vertebra, compressing the fourth number nerve, causing the weight to bend forward due to the contraction of gluteus muscle. A 75-year female patient experienced sudden onset back pain that became severe. In the front of left lumbar region, eight days ago, the pain was worse when lying down than when sitting, and the patient was unable to sleep because of the pain. Well, upon examination, the left gluteus minimus was stiff, and there was severe pressure on the left iliopsoas muscles and a long adductor muscle. In younger people, Lower back pain might be suspected to be caused by tension in iliopsoas muscle or sciatica, but given the patient age and the condition of their spine, an MRI was performed. The MRI reading showed the followed. Well, as you can see, there is multiple severe degeneration on lumbar spine. This kind of interpretation is fairly common in patients in old age, but this degenerative change may have caused chronic feature pain, not a good one. Um, based on imaging findings alone, it would be necessary to suspect chronic degenerative changes in the spine, but the pain was acute at its worst. Since the symptoms were acute, 
it was decided to try percutaneous epidural ganglion block. It may be unclear where to start from in terms of managing the pain that is thought to be extremely chronic in terms of the skeletal structure, so it was said not to have too high expectations and to try treatment. A mixture of 0.4% lidocaine and 50 mg of steroid was made into 20 millimeter, milliliter and injected into the percutaneous epidural space between the 4th and 5th lumbar vertebra. After the injection, the leg pain and lumbar pain that occurred when lying down disappeared as if they had evaporated within a few minutes. The patient and caregiver were very satisfied, but I cautioned them. This effect may be temporary and ask them to contact if the pain recurs as time passes. Two days later, the caregiver contacted me and said that the patient's pain has disappeared and was comfortable. If that condition persists for more than a week, it may be a good result, so I asked them to observe the course well. However, on the fifth day, I received a call in the morning say that, saying, saying that the pain had recurred from early morning and they couldn't stand it. Given that the skeletal structure is not particularly good, it seemed unlikely that repeating the percutaneous epidural injection would be meaningful, so I arranged for a patient to go to the university hospital while keeping the MRI films. At the hospital where the medical consultation was received, attention was focused on sacrum due to the patient's advanced age and widespread lumbar intervertebral disc herniation and severe spinal cord stenosis. I had several direct phone conversations with patients who were hospitalized at a nearby university hospital and the orthopedic surgeon said that surgery would be good, but they were worried about where to start from because the range was wide. The patient was discharged, and after being hospitalized for three weeks and taking medications without surgery, and although the severe pain was subsided, he's still uncomfortable with activity and is carefully while living, and is watching the course and promising to inject directly into sciatic nerve if the pain becomes severe again. At some medical institutions, if an abnormal finding is not found in the spine, they only think that the muscle pain in the posterior of the spine is just a muscle pain and they cannot give a clear answer to what problem of which muscle caused the pain. When the sciatic nerve becomes tense and the muscle's elasticity disappears and the muscle becomes shorter, it becomes sacral forward strain, which, mean, which is called lordosis, when standing upright for a long time or stretching and lying flat on a high joint. And the gap between the facet joint narrows causing pain in the facet joint. The main function of SWAS major muscle is hip flexion and lumbar flexion, but it can also cause lumbar lordosis while flexing the lumbar spine. Rush called this combination of opposing functions the SWAS paradox. When the SWAS major and iliacus are tense, they press on the lumbar nerves passing between them and cause tension in the muscles that receive their innovation. And tension in the cordyceps femoris can cause pain in the knee joint. When the patient has low back pain, it is severe when standing or lying straight with extended hips. However, I learned from the MRI examination results of the case presented above that lumbar nerve root lesions in the upper lumbar spine can also excite the lumbar nerves and cause pain in front of the thigh or tense the soft muscle and cause low back pain. This carnation in the upper lumbar spine is not common, but it is possible and this possibility could not be excluded. So you see soft muscle pain is quite complicated and sometimes might be mixed with other muscular structure or chronic degeneration. So it is imperative to find the exact cause of the pain. If you enjoyed this video, 
See you later with more meaningful contents. Thank you very much.